I am joined by Sammy and Rennie Petrucci from Mount Juliet. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hey. yeah. How are you? We're doing great. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Oh, you hang up. No, you hang up. Stop it. Stop it. Um, so please tell me the backstory of Mount Juliet. How did this this wonderful creation come about? Yeah, well, um, we we've both been doing music kind of separately our whole lives and mm -hmm. Rennie went to school for songwriting I went to school for acting um but it kind of it was one of those things that just like should have been happening the whole time right and we I came to him with a song I wrote and then he was like wait I want to help you with this we should just like write together and it just kind of yeah. happened yeah she yeah. came to me with like she says it was like an idea but she came to me with like a, an amazing song on her first try wow. and I was why haven't we been writing together? This is like, <laughs> wow. So, yeah. That's amazing. So this is, is being in a band with not, not only your sibling, but your twin. Is it, is it difficult? Does it work? Do you have arguments? Is it, is it like, you know, you guys are at each other's throats or does it work really well? I, I think it works really well. I <laughs> mean, I'm like, I'll let you take, no, it does. It, it works really well. It's very natural. We like, just our energies mesh well together and we're good at kind of separate things. So together okay. kind of complete the puzzle. There can't really be like beef either. Cause like, you know, we're siblings. Like yeah. we've been bickering <laughs> since we were like, yeah, we're none not. of the band beef would be <laughs> the same as, you know, personal beef. It's all, yeah. it's all good. Plus we're, we're generally on the same page. Like yes. if there's a disagreement, it's just like, it's usually just like, an arrangement thing like can you mm -hmm. play this it's too hard for me and then it's like no i don't want to play it you play it <laughs> yeah yeah but then does, do you guys take it home and then it's like yeah well actually you're not playing on the playstation tonight because you said that you know <laughs> never <laughs> i mean sometimes like i'll complain to my mom like oh, i wanted to sing this part but he won't and she'll be like, you guys are, i'm not involved in this like, <laughs> it's never it's you're grounded like, yeah right yeah <laughs> amazing um I would like to ask you guys both because I, I know that you're within the early days of your band, which is so exciting, but I know that you've obviously been involved in music for a long time, whether that's in different musical projects or, and I wanted to ask you what has been so far in your, your musical path, the biggest spinal tap moment of your career. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh my God. We, we definitely have had a few already um we got lost backstage yeah i yeah I, so, <laughs> so i can think of a specific scenario where okay. i was playing in front of my entire like high school class nice so, like the pressure was on i wasn't popular this was like kind of my chance to make an impression <laughs> okay and oh, uh, I'm, I'm excited too. yeah so everyone's there um and there was this girl i was friends with who told me that she would sing um Sunday morning by Maroon 5 if okay. I played it on guitar okay. um, so when the time came she got cold feet and she wasn't in the audience so I called her up on stage and no one came up no. so we no. played the song without a vocalist no. literally so <laughs> which, which was like yeah it was it was yeah it was That's really, really bad. and I didn't have like the social skills to like play it off so I was just like <laughs> Yeah. That's incredible. That's amazing. That's so funny. As Spinal Tap stories go, that might be one of the greatest, unless Sammy can up that. I don't know. I don't know if I can up it. I, I have a lot of like acting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me. Um. Oh, I don't even <laughs> show the, tell this. <laughs> Who are you about to cancel? I uh, yeah. <laughs> um. Basically, I, I was in an acting class. I don't even know. This isn't really a spinal tap, but if we're sharing embarrassing performance situations. Sure. And I had to do this scene from this play called The Maids. It's yeah. like very intense, kind of absurdist play. And there's a scene where the two characters, it's kind of like the penultimate scene of the play. And one of them like whips the other character oh. with like a belt. But like, obviously I was like, I'm not going to do that. Mm. But my scene partner was like, no, you should definitely do it. And like, I, I want to cry, like make me cry. And I was like, Renny's like, why are you telling this story? <laughs> I was like, I don't know if we should do this. And then like, I, I was, I just didn't know what to do. And we got to class and I, we were doing the scene. And then I start like, like not hard, but I was like, 
like kind of actually hitting her with the thing and then the teacher was like stop it what are you guys doing That's, and i was like crying because i was so embarrassed i was already crying as i was doing it oh my god that's amazing that's wow. so cool they are two really great oh, stories they're amazing um <clears throat> your single uh Mira, i have to ask is i've listened to it i've heard it i found it to genuinely be a really beautiful song i found it to be the arrangement was really mature the the, the composition in itself was great production was great um the the instruments that you guys have chosen on that just, it just works so well and also without giving too much away there are elements of kind of really heavy music in there sort of towards towards the end which is which is really nice you called it mirror had you considered that your dad obviously played on a song called the mirror is this is this a conversation you hadn't no no, <laughs> I, no I wrote the song and then I like showed our parents and I think my mom might have said you know that has a song called the mirror and I was like I don't think I know that song <laughs> We're, we're horrible like yeah. we love our dad he's you know an amazing so guitarist so talented but both of us kind of listen to different genres than yes. sort of what he plays so uh we know most of his songs but like some of them just slip Slipped past through the crowd. no yeah. i didn't know if it was a little nod i i, I wasn't too sure i mean lyrically i mean that, you know, not but huh. Well, he's going to be disappointed now. <laughs> no, no, yeah. He already knows. <laughs> he we knows how we feel about his music. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I, I've obviously, I, you know, I have to touch on the fact that, you know, your dad is arguably the, the greatest living guitarist in the world. Um, this is a really similar scenario as to when Nick Collins, the son of Phil Collins, came on the show and we kind of asked about, you know, his relationship in music. And I was wondering if I could kind of ask you about that. Are, are, are there cons as well as pros as to having somebody so prestigious, you know, being, being your dad and also you kind of wanting to break into that industry as well? Yeah, yes. I, I would say mostly pros. Yeah. Um. So, like, first of all, like, you know, we've been encouraged our whole lives to do music. There was no like, you need to get a real job. You need to amazing. Oh, you know, yeah. Um, so we've had that from the start. Our parents have been super supportive. And uh, like we said, uh, I graduated from Berklee College of Music, which, you know, would not happen without their support. And wow. Sammy, you know, pursue is still pursuing acting. And um, yeah. so those are the pros. The cons have nothing to do with our parents or our situation sure it's mostly just like preconceived notions people would have yes. of, about yes. us yes um so like for example this song like you know obviously we wrote it we uh produced it um we paid people right. like we paid someone to arrange the string part and the drum yes. part um you know he our parents really had no part in Amazing. the creation of the song mm -hmm. um but even so i i all, when I show it to people, usually they'll ask like, oh, is that like, you know, your dad playing guitar or is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has more important things yeah. to do <laughs> than to play on this track does, but thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, like, yeah. so supportive, you know, obviously, mm -hmm. but kind of in a good way, I feel like he's kind of let us, you know, do your own thing. On, this, our own, on our own, which is really, like, even more supportive, I feel like. It's kind of cool. Yeah. It's a, it's amazing because not only are you going to be naturally very well connected with the music world because of, of your dad, but also you've got somebody who's been around the block, written some great tracks, won a Grammy and can give you advice for free. So I, I can imagine having that kind of key, that gold ticket, if you like, to that sort of information is is amazing. And it must be a, a real kind of um, a, a faster climb of, of the ladder for you guys in a way. Does it feel like that? Yeah, it, I mean, it's a blessing. It's de it's definitely a blessing. I think, um, obviously, like, we want people to know that this is, like, our project. Like, we yeah. didn't have help with this. But at the same time, like, people are going to be more interested naturally just mm -hmm. because of who he is. And, like, we can't deny that. Yeah. Um, we, we try to leave him out of the process as much as possible. Um, so, like, right now... Um, 
we're doing all of our management. Sam is actually doing most of our management and uh, we're in the process of reaching out to <laughs> different, yeah, uh, different studios to try and get a recording contract and really to try to do this ourselves. Amazing. At the same time though, obviously it's a huge blessing, you know, yeah. it's like, um, yeah, especially since we both love music, you know, it's, it's like, it's like you said, it's, it's like, just like a foot in the door. It's like a, a ticket. Yeah. I wouldn't say a golden ticket because you still have to have decent music, but of course. It's, a, it's a ticket. Of for course. Sure. Yeah. Of course. Um, I, I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens with Mount Juliet. And I, and I think the, the crazy thing kind of for, for me, somebody just kind of observing and, and watching your brand grow is that you've got a following but there's there's no product yet because Mirror hasn't actually been released. So in theory, this is kind of like the other way around to how kind of 99% of bands would do it. They'd go out, gig, build a fan base, support slots, blah, blah, blah. You guys have, have already got kind of a very quickly growing fan base, but you're putting out teasers of a song. I need to know when this song is coming out because it's really oh, fucking we... great. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, we, uh, we're just, we're trying to figure out the best route you know like no we... no a date <laughs> no oh my god i mean we obviously like as soon as possible um we are pretty busy we do have like a bunch of shows coming up and Six. we've been kind of focusing on that so it's yeah it's kind of like i feel like once once we have a little bit of a break in our schedule we're gonna like actually focus on it but we are done the song is done so it's mm. it's really just yeah it's just about like know. do we want to put it out uh independently through like something like TuneCore or like yeah. you know cd baby or or do we want to you know try to pursue the the label venue and I, and I feel like we are with this kind of stuff we are trying to um get it out to more people and I I just feel like that there is a chance if we were to release it independently it might not get the um mm -hmm. traction, the traction. That, we, yeah. that we want it to yeah. yeah and we do have like a whole album of stuff that we're mm. ready to record also mm. so Amazing. the help with that getting a deal would definitely help you know I, I, stuff I, out I, fast. I was gonna ask you you guys have, have have grown up in a house where um you know um record labels and deals and everything has, has always been probably very very kind of prominent in conversations with regards to you know your, your dad's projects but actually as you are both in your early 20s and you're doing this in a world where kind of you've always known that Spotify has been there, you know, Apple Music's always been available. Do you think having the knowledge that you do from um, when record labels held a lot more power to, to when they do now, do you think that record labels and record deals are as important as perhaps they used to be? Yes. Uh, so something that's not seen, this is something that I know, um, through actually one of my professors at Berkeley, who was actually suing Spotify at the time. Oh, wow. Uh, Melissa wow. Farrick, name drop. Yeah. <laughs> um, she, so basically uh, Spotify does actually work mainly with labels. So most of the large playlists that you see are actually label only. Mm -hmm. So you can't get on, in the past it used to be, and when I say in the past, I mean like recently, like only like five or so years ago, yeah. um, there were editorial playlists that mm -hmm. independent artists could get on very mm -hmm. easily. And, and uh, I actually had one song that I recorded with one of my friends in college that we, we got on an editorial playlist and overnight we got, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of streams. Mm -hmm. Whereas now it's become sort of more of like a payola thing or like mm -hmm. a label thing where like, the biggest playlist you really can't get on unless you have label backing, mm -hmm. which it which is lame. It's extremely lame because the, yeah. these, uh, you know, platforms are supposed to or they claim to support independent artists, but they don't. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. That's cool because you. I mean, you you hear a lot about you know unsigned bands, um, you know, like headlining festivals, and you know, you you hear of these stories, and a lot of people kind of under the impression that you know you don't you don't need a, a label anymore, but actually. It, it massively helps, especially financially, you know, in, in the, in the current economic cli uh, climate that we're all, we're all going through at the moment, it, it, it definitely helps. Um, what would your advice be to an aspiring band 
regardless of genre, that really wanted to make steps for themselves in a, a very turbulent music industry? Hmm. I would say maybe just, I mean, for us, like playing out has been huge. Just getting that experience and kind of like building a fan base that way and meeting musicians too while you're out. Like, it, I feel like mm. that kind of networking is really important. Um, and it also is like, really, it, it really just makes you like, oh, this is actually what I want to be doing. Like I, mm. the other stuff, it won't just come. Like, obviously there's, you know, things you need to do, but I think just playing out was like a big step for us. Cause we were writing yeah. a lot and we were, mm. even rec we started recording before we even did any live shows. And then like, That's I remember the first show we had, I was like, oh, wait, isn't this kind of like what we want to do? But yeah. now I feel like once you're in the swing of that, it's, you feel more like you're like a working musician. Yes. And that helps a lot with, um, you know, meeting people and figuring out the next steps. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah I totally advice? agree. Yeah. Um, I, my advice just comes more from like, like less from is it going to actually help you and more just what I want to hear. Um, yes. I hear yes. More, yeah, I want to hear more like music that's not afraid to be like weird and not mm. fit in. Like mm. a lot of the stuff I hear is just kind of like the same kind of thing repeated. You know what I mean? It's it's mm -hmm. like it's all got that uh you know indie surf guitar sound, you know, lo fi and I, I love that, but um I would just say like if you have an idea that's like weird and, and not accessible, like <laughs> pursue it. Because I totally want to hear those songs. That's like, yeah, yeah. That's I love good, when fans have like a one-off song that's just out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's so awesome. That's my advice. Yeah, I really like that. Um, it's so difficult to talk about your your sound because you you this is a real first for me because I'm interviewing a band that are emerging but haven't released anything yet. So it's really exciting, but it, you know, I, I can't, I really can't wait to see um, where, where this goes next. I suppose that is actually my next question. Where, where does this go? I mean, we, we, we know that mirror is in your back pocket. It's ready to go. Please release it as soon as possible. People need to hear it. Um, but, um, but what is next? You've got some live shows coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have, um, we have a show at the cutting room on August 19th. Um, 7 p.m. That one's going to be big. It's, I think, the biggest venue that we're playing so far. Wow. Um, and that'll be really fun. We have like a cello player, we have a drummer, wow. some special guests, and that's very exciting. We're also, um, are we, we're opening for Melissa Barrett, For Melissa, right? yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I believe it's October 7th. The Bitter End. Yes. Um, and we're also kind of secret at the moment. We, we are working with a musician who's a touring musician and kind of who's it, who, who, who? Tour. can you tell me <laughs> <laughs> You'll see. don't we'll do that, that. that. <laughs> that's not um, fair we'll announce it. but we do post most of our like we do have a lot of videos of our music on our instagram yes not juliet official Good um point. yeah that yeah i would definitely like our, say give, hub, give right? that page a look if you're interested <laughs> um we have a bunch of songs that we've recorded live uh mm -hmm. but like you said uh we're going to be releasing our first actual song single yeah um soon and, oh, i uh, keep thinking someone's gonna like fuck up and give me an actual date here i'm like is he gonna say if it? we had one <laughs> if we had one you would know we're like can it be tomorrow but like no, <laughs> we have to we have to figure it out but it'll be very soon Amazing. um and then after that we just want to you know keep keep recording and releasing stuff and hopefully do some bigger tours and I, I think one thing that, that really, really stands out for me is how different you sound to your dad's band. And I think that is amazing that you guys have, you know, you've obviously extremely talented musicians individually, um, but also you've, you've seen kind of, you know, your dad's success. That's amazing. But it's, it's great that you have taken all the ingredients you know and knowledge as, as to perhaps what he's given you and you've turned it and molded it into something really captivating and modern and interesting and, and poetic so for for me like when um sammy you sent me the track and i listened to it and i was like okay where's this gonna go and I, it was it was so and this isn't being obviously derogatory about your dad's band they're my favorite band but it was a, a really refreshing and and welcoming to hear how how different you sound 
Um, Thanks. And, so I, yeah. and I think and if like, Pete, sorry. go on. No, no, no. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning as if we're actually in person. I'm like, no, you go, you go. Okay. I, I, I was just going to say, like, for anyone wanting to come to one of Mount Juliet's shows, I think that in itself is a, a huge re uh, reason to, to, to check out your live shows because it, it is just such an audible experience. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we love both of our parents are both, like, you know, in that genre and we, we love yes. them and we're so talented. But it, it is funny, like, I feel like a lot of people who grow up in that kind of world like do lean towards listening to that and enjoying it a lot but like we mm. both went kind of the opposite yes. like you know it was Elliot rebellion. Smith <laughs> yeah. Phoebe Bridger, like that's what and our dad's like this is depressing it's good but it's how do you listen to this we're like we love it <laughs> I was gonna say obviously like your your mom's like a, a, a she she's she's an amazing player as well oh, yeah. um she's she's super cool okay. and um I really loved watching like online footage of like your mom and dad touring together I just thought yeah that's so like fucking that cool. was amazing Great. that yeah. was really cool to see I'm really glad they did that It'll be you on the lineup next. You'll be the support for the support, and then it'll be them. Oh god! <laughs> oh, you know, they're all gonna be like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Playing. I don't know if they would dig it. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a really strange atmosphere between bands, right? I know, right? Yeah, it's quite, the, the quite the juxtaposition. Yeah, like, a little bit. Guys, you are just two of the most kind of super cool people that um I've I've had on the show. You you you've stolen my hand, um, <laughs> but um seriously uh thank you so much for coming on um i can't wait to see what happens next um I'm, I'm already a fan of your music just by hearing the track and um please just head to um mount juliet's instagram which is kind of the hub of all their new information and pictures and snippets of their mysterious music um and uh, yeah and and best of luck with everything thank you, thank so, you much. so much thanks, thanks for, for having us, having us. <laughs> that was not fun. that was that's yeah <laughs>